Okay, so Soundgarden writing. When somebody in Soundgarden, if you were to come in with a song, song idea, what would it, what would it be like? Would, um, you, would you be apprehensive to play it for, for the other guys? Not initially. Um, it, it was, there's so many different ways that we wrote. I mean, mm -hmm. every different way you could think of. Um, would there be demos of songs? Uh, not initially. That, La later on. Yeah, right? I mean, Chris and Hero had a four track Real to real, and Chris would, you know, he wasn't as prolific then, but he would write, record a whole song, and, and play it for us. Um, I think in our initial, you know, for our first few years, or maybe it was three or four songs that he wrote that were part of our set. Most of the writing was done usually with Hero introducing a bass riff, mm -hmm. and I and Hero didn't play guitar, so we'd have this cool bass riff and. Chris is drumming, so that's that's their living situation, bass and drums. And I'd come in and come up with guitar parts, and usually that would involve just watching Hero, and then I'd kind of do something arpeggiated. And we'd try to come up with the dynamics based around the guitar. There's the bass and drums, so I'll do this over the, that bass riff like eight times, and then I'll do something else over that same bass riff. and. And then that'll and that would guide the vocals. And then Chris would say, "I got lyrics that would fit that." Run down to his bedroom, come back up, the, some lyrics he had written. Mm -hmm. He would just sit there and sketch out lyrics and try. And he thinks rhythmically this will fit with this, with uh, what's going on here, and dynamically it'll fit. So then Hero will write a, a change. You know, it's like, "Why don't we do this over here after we do that?" So it was weird. We would kind of we'd stack things. We'd say. Let's, we'll do, I'll do this, I'll break up this bass riff, I'll do this guitar part for this, the vocals come in, and I'll, and I'll step back and play, and play another part, you know, um, and then we'll all change together, you know, something like that. And that would depend on whether I initiated a riff or if Hero initi initiated a riff. And because Chris is playing drums, he couldn't just go, here's, you guys, here's this, this thing. Um, so he would come with a, a cassette, you know, something he made on the reel to reel, and if he was playing guitar and drums and he, you know, sing and he'd play that for us, we'd say, okay, cool. Now he'd have to show. Now he'd have to get another guitar and sit down with us and show us what he's doing. Then he goes back behind the drums. So how then does, does Matt come into the picture then, and Chris go to being guitar player singer? So we realized that it's very difficult for him to play drums and sing. Your know, hero sang, played bass, which was an easier deal. But Chris starts singing more right. because he had lyrics. He'd say, I got lyrics that'll fit this idea. And sometimes there's a debate there, you know, like Hero would say, you know, I want to write lyrics for this, it's my riff, I want to, I have these lyrical ideas that I'm thinking, okay. And then Chris, and, and if that wasn't the case, if Hero just had a riff and it was developing by me adding guitar, Chris would say, I do have lyrics that'll fit that. And, uh -huh. And and that's and that's kind of how that worked. Uh, he starts singing more okay. because because he's introducing lyrics. And you have like the archetypal front man. And we didn't know I that mean, because he's behind. Didn't, so you didn't even realize this. High high right? plain no, sight. He's, he's behind. No yeah, we're not thinking that he's behind the drums. This well, guy is just so, so. It's all there. So you know. Well, that's what's weird. And as vocalist, wow. Because a year I, or two before that, I can't I'll, even. Imagine this. Well, that's How did you weird. guys not realize that? Well, we that? didn't know that because we were playing in that stupid <laughs> cover were, band that he was smoker. singing. So we were playing bass, and I'm looking at his. I'm looking at the back of the guy. You know, right. And Chris is singing, right. but he was a, he was a drummer, but he wanted to try singing, so he's singing these door songs, and that was that oh, cover band, right? Oh my God. So now we're doing Jesus. our own thing, and he's back to his main instrument, which is drumming. Yeah. And so. That's how we see him. We're I writing. I would love to hear as, Chris I mean, singing, singing drummers. Song. I mean, I know I can't even imagine. Yeah, that. Dave Grohl, Frank Zappa. Singing you know, drummers Phil have Collins. a hard time. You know what I mean? It right. takes a little. You got to work a little extra hard to get people to take you seriously. If you're there's a so many great frontmen that started off as as drummers. Amazing, so I uh, saw the show at which you introduced Scott Sunquist as the new drummer. You played part of the set with where Chris. Was that at? Is it Gorilla Gardens? You okay. played part of the show with, Chris, with you played part of the show with Chris on drums, and then you announced we're going to introduce our new drummer. And Scott took the drums. Chris stepped out front. Did he step out drum. front then without a guitar yeah. and just Correct. sang? Yeah, he didn't yeah. start playing guitar in Soundgarden for <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Okay, so when he would sing, did, did you did it then occur to you then or watching them? Oh my God, he, this guy's an well, amazing frontman. Well, I knew he could man. sing, and I knew he could be a frontman because of that dopey cover. Band, but but we're writing, and Chris is writing as a drummer with Hero. Right. 
okay. and you're with me. So that's the value we see there. Yeah. It's like the three of us playing instrumentally. It's like, and we're writing things in weird time signatures. This is in five. These, these are things that the rhythm section could communicate. He was we're, a good drummer. We're going to do five, four here, and then we go to this three, four section. So I'm the idiot guitarist trying to understand what you know these two talking about you know what the cues are off the drums and bass and i'm just kind of trying to wrap a guitar thing around it if that meant just feeding back until i knew where to fit into the song that's what i would do and but so that's how we see chris's value he is helping us put these songs together as the drummer and he's we're writing things in weird time signatures that he can understand and interpret and work with here on that, or work with me on that. When Matt was in the band then, when he joins the band, and Chris brings in a song that's in an odd time, would he ever sit down to the drums and say, hey, why don't you play something like this, or would Matt no, just play? Matt, the, Chris deferred to, deferred to Matt. Always deferred yeah, to Matt. Matt, Matt was just using another universe. Would Chris go, go and play the drums at rehearsal, though, for fun, if, if he was there before yeah. everybody? Yeah. Um, yeah. We eventually came to this point where it's like, it's too difficult for him to, to sing in five four or seven four right. and play drums. Yeah, it, it was just it was kind of amazing that he was doing it, but it was it, it was just too difficult. It just got to a point where he's like, I can't, you know, I can't do this. Um, let's either get a full time singer or a full time drummer. How loud of a singer was Chris? Oh, he was. He, yeah, he had good abs. Yeah, he can belt it. I mean, it was really yeah. loud, right? Yeah. So those high he had to notes sing that he's over singing. The drums. So he, he, in order to hear himself, he's banging away in the drums. Boom! He's he, he, he had a powerful, big voice. Okay, and Kurt, he was totally loud, and just wah, just really intense. That was that was part of the appeal. He was just really intense and loud, and he meant every note. It's it's amazing what great singers. I mean, really, of all the the Seattle bands. Every one of the big bands that came out of here had phenomenally yeah. great singers. It's amazing how many we had here in the city. I mean, really, yeah. it's it's Lane, Eddie, Kurt, yes, Chris, I mean, just, it, Andy yeah. Wood, <laughs> Andy Wood, yeah, God bless him. Why is that, Jack? Why is that? Why were there all these great singers here? I don't know. It's in the water or something. It's a good question. I really don't. I can't answer that. I mean, isn't that strange you know, though? It is because as a studio rap for many, many years and also playing in bands for many, many years, I mean, the, the one thing that sets a good, you know, a, a noteworthy demo apart for me when I get it is, you know, is there a good singer or is it an average indie rock singer? Right. You know, because there's a lot of bands with great music, great you know, lyrics, you know, good sound, but the lyrics, you know, the singing is kind of an afterthought. It's like, well, someone in the band needs to sing. Who's it going to be? Well, I guess I'll do it. You know, someone volunteers. And, you know, and the singing's always kind of like, well, we did it because someone has to do it. And it's, you know, it's always a pleasant surprise when that that someone suddenly discovers that they're good at I mean, this is astounding singing. Yeah. From, from but most all of these different bands. But most all of these, these big bands. They didn't all start out amazing right from the get-go, though. Okay. Kurt had a really hard time singing and playing at the same time when okay. they started. The first couple Nirvana shows, he was very, he was mm -hmm. kind of mumbly because yeah. he was writing these songs. And it took him a, a, a couple cycles of songwriting to figure out that he had to simplify his strumming in order to be able to sing more strongly. I personally went through the same thing myself. And, you know, Chris Cornell realized that, you know, I can't be a drummer and do this. I mean, so, and, you know, Chris, when he started, was kind of screamy. The early sound garden is very screamy and his voice is very raw. And it's a little bit, a little bit of, like, ah, you know, yep. he did that. Kind of, and, you know, it took, he, he suddenly sort of went, wait a minute, I can control it. So all of these singers you mentioned, that it didn't, they didn't just fall out of the chute as amazing singers. It was, they had to sort of find it mm -hmm. and develop it. And you can hear it if you listen to well, from the very. What's that song on, on the Screaming Life, uh, something wheel? Um, Beyond the wheel, yeah. Beyond that's the insane. wheel. Well, that's on, like. That is so intense. That's an ultra mega okay. That's yeah, an ultra mega okay. Yeah, that's right. an ultra mega. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's he's finding his inner Rob Halford in we that song. We were just going yeah, remixing okay. that a couple years ago, right? Yeah, we did. We remixed ultra mega. Well, that, that was the thing is that we thought Chris. We thought when he sings, he's, it sounds kind of conventional, and we weren't really thinking about the fact that he was handcuffed to the drum kit, and we wanted to look for another singer, just just <laughs> because. Yes. Because of his value as a drummer, we're thinking of he ourselves. He was that good of a drummer. We're thinking of ourselves as songwriters. We're okay. thinking that he 
got us. He got Hero. He got me. Yeah. We you all were fit rockers, together. You were artists. We fit together instrumentally. And it's like, let's find a singer, you know. Uh, but Chris had other ideas, and he brought Scott in. He worked with uh, this guy who's, uh, who's, to this day, is one of my handful of best friends, Scott Sunquist. A good, just great guy. He worked with Chris. He was a drummer. He was really into the Dead Kennedys, you know. And so he's a punk rock guy. He was 10 years older than us. But he liked punk rock, had a cool leather jacket, and Chris said, hey, here's my friend Scott. He just brought him in, like, let's have him play drums, because Chris wanted to sing. He played for like a year or something like that, a year and a half in the band? He, almost two years. Yeah. But, but Scott was a groove drummer. He could play Santana and Hendrix and punk rock. So he was 4'4", four, four, and he was 3'4". Chris was fives and sevens and the weird stuff. That he, so when we get Scott, Chris is singing, and what we thought was conventional in his vocal approach starts opening up because he isn't handcuffed to the drums. And we, you know, we probably could have had some foresight, but. So a lot of the odd time stuff came from Chris. Uh, came from our relationship, the three of us together. Interesting. Because a lot of the stuff that was written then was either, was written on bass or guitar. So, so I'm writing a weird time signature stuff. Hero's writing a weird time signature stuff. Chris understands it and he could play it. Um, S Scott was more threes and fours, so around, so our songwriting changed and became heavier. So the quirky, weird stuff started becoming more. We even consciously thought, eh, this is kind of Santana here, this is kind of Stooges here, this is kind of Hendrix here. And it became more grooves and threes and fours and heavy. And, and then when we got Matt back, in the, when Matt joins the band, all of a sudden the weirdness starts coming. 